Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. Oh, wait, hang on. Um, I forgot to adjust the setting. One moment, please. There we go. And my mics just sound a little bit better. I always have to turn the gain down a little bit on my mic uh, for recordings because I always boost it in editing and then I have to boost it in stream because I can't really edit these. <laughs> Anyways, hello everyone. How's it going? We're going to play some Sword of the Stars tonight. I've been getting in the mood to play this game recently and I decided like, hey, well, it might be fun to stream it with you guys because this is a very, very underrated space game and with a lot of good... Um, our underrated RTS TBS game and with a lot of good uh, um, RTS is coming out this year we might as well celebrate with an old classic so hopefully you guys are doing good uh, my day was going pretty well we have a clearance sale going on at the store and it's not as busy as we expected it to be but it's been a pretty good day by the way you guys like that picture of this lady um, in the middle of a sunflower thing with a sundress on, collecting sunflowers? It's very cute. I really, really enjoy this. It's a very, very cute photo. Or a cute uh, um, wallpaper engine photo thing. So, hopefully you guys like it as much as I do. Um, that one is by... It's called Sunflower Girl by Kim. So, very, very, very nice. And... Trying to celebrate a little bit with spring coming up, but we, we have another week of really, really cold weather. Possible snow, possible. Uh, possible snow, possible. Yep, those are words. <laughs> with the possibility of some snow coming in. So, yeah, March is start, starting off as a really, really weird weird month for us. Anyways, um, let's go ahead and uh, get into the game. Let me switch over to the game screen. And there we go. Sword of the Stars. I haven't played this game it's, since the last time we did a um, a series on the channel. It's it's actually been quite some time. I've actually been kind of craving this game. <laughs> Anyways, we are playing the Complete Collection, which you can get on Steam. And we all also have a mod on called the Combined Mod. And this mod, the reason why it's called Combined Mod, because it's actually two mods put into one. The first mod is a game balancing mod where um, it adjusts the health of all the ships so they last longer in combat, it adjusts weapon damage, adjusts speeds, um, it adjusts uh, some of the AI behaviors, it does a lot of really cool things. It's it's a really, a really good mod. And then the second part of the mod is a graphical update mod which updates the planet textures to make them look like they're more HD, updates the ship textures and whatnot so they're more up to speed to 1080p instead of like way they were um, in the beginning, when Sword of the Stars first came out. It's it's a really good mod, and I highly recommend anyone who is a big fan of Sword of the Stars to, uh, to check it out. Anyways, we are going to be doing a single player on custom map. Also, let me know if how well you guys can see this. If this is too small, then I can, I can uh, adjust some things to make it uh, look a little bit better. Boopity boop. Um, I want to do mini clusters. Is mini clusters. We start off with a few planets, but there's so many different planets all throughout the entire map. So I think that would be a really cool playthrough. I don't know if we're going to do 350 stars. That means it's going to be a long time before we actually start getting into combat. Um, Let's do like 200. 200 is still a lot of freaking stars. So there's a lot more a lot higher chance that we're going to get into combat and we'll be able to enjoy combat um on the uh, the lower lower end of the game i think i think that would be a good compromise so let's go ahead and do that um strategy turn length uh this is when we're in the um in the galactic uh, map mode where it's turn based i always keep that on limited because i like to think whenever i'm making my plays and then combat turn rank, we have it set to 360 seconds, which is where I normally keep it, 6 minutes. So when we go into combat, six, um, the, the length of the combat will be 6 minutes. And then we start with $100,000. We start with one colony and no technology. And usually I like to put economy and research efficiency down to 50% so the game lasts a lot longer. Because the AI is ruthless in Sword of the Stars. I always forget to continuously expand no matter what happens in the game because the AI will not stop expanding and once they get to a certain point, they will try to kill you. <laughs> 
I always, I always fall for that trap where I expand to a certain point where I feel comfortable, and then I start defending, and then the AI will keep expanding and eventually out tech now out out tech me and out construct me and just wipe me out off of the the galaxy because they are they are ruthless. But I will put research down to fifty percent just so it takes longer. And keep economy at 100 so we can have a decent amount of fleets. Okay, and alliances are possible, teams are not possible, AI will be set to normal. Random encounters 100%, that's all good. Hey Shoemeister, how's it going man? Yeah, yeah, it's definitely one of those deals. Um, you, you have to like train yourself to continuously be ruthless in this game, which it's cool because in the Sword of the Stars lore, um, the whole reason why um, humans got ruthless is because they they were complacent and their planet got under attack by alien species that we didn't even know existed. So we had to build up our technology and pretty much show the galaxy that hey, we're not to be messed with. We we're just as strong as the other the other aliens. So. It, it matches it matches the the personality of the game. Yeah, um, let's go ahead and create game. Mm -hmm. There's the game name. It doesn't really matter because it's just creating a lobby. And uh, yeah, um, let's go ahead and go through the species. I'm going to quickly glaze over these. We're not going to go too much into details. I'll go more into details when we actually find them on the map. But we have six different uh, factions in this game. We have the humans, uh, which, yeah, they're, they're humans. Um, they focus more on a, a balance a tactic of speed, firepower, and um, defense. They use the node drive to... Uh, to jump from system to system, which means they have the fastest and the slowest speed in the game. They have the fastest because the node drive is extremely quick, but if they can't get to the plan with the node drive, they have to travel by sublight, which means they're also the slowest. I would say they're about medium difficulty for a new player. Hiver are extremely defensive. Um, they have the ability to deploy gates on, um, on their planets so they can jump their entire fleet to a nearby planet that has another gate on which means they can take their entire armada and um, defend a, a planet from it or send their entire armada out into an enemy. Really, really cool faction. Uh, but they can get lots of armor research, um, and, um, and I believe they get lots of um, beam research. Hey, Jackson. How's it going, man? Another night, another night shift. I get that, uh, uh, Scoot Master. Um... I, I have the evening shift at uh um at my work, so I usually work between like 5 p.m. or 4 p.m. 5 p.m. to like 9 p.m. So <laughs> I get it. Sometimes those days suck. Good so far. Cool, Jackson. Glad you're having a good day. But yeah, so that's the Hiver. Next we have the Tarkas, which are the monkey uh, people, monkey reptilian people. They are the most aggressive of the group. They, they focus on hyperdrives, which are, have a decent amount of speed but require a lot of fuel to operate. So it's difficult for them to transfer to large armadas until they get the research to uh, um, improve their hyperdrive. And then Lear, which is the team that we're going to be playing, are like dolphin space people. They, they have the best uh, movement of the game. Um, they can go the furthest once they get all of their research done. And... Um, they have a flicker drive, which allows them to instantly get to maximum speed of their ships. So they have really, really good maneuverability and uh, and scouting away from enemies. But but because of that, and because of their very elegant design of their ships, they don't have a whole lot of armor and defense. So they have the speed, but they don't really have the armor to uh, associate with it. Yeah. Yeah, there's a timeline in this game where like lizard, I, I, it's like a different species that isn't related to humans, but there's there's a species in this game where lizards and monkeys rose up and got to space technology. <laughs> it's pretty cool. And then next we have the Zul, who I kind of forget who these guys are. I think they're gorillas. Not, they're not quite monkeys, but um, they are 
Oh, I forget what their species actually is supposed to be. Um, but they're basically slavers. They have technology similar to human, where they have no drive, but they literally... Their, their um, jump capability is ripping a f um, the fabric of time. Or I don't think it's... No, it's fabric of space to create their own a node uh, lane so they can get from system to system. Uh, but they're, they're very aggressive. Um, and... Uh, I don't think they have a whole lot of defenses because they're, they're pretty much just pirates. Um, but they're, they're basically, their task is to try to take over the entire galaxy before they wipe out all of their own planets by starving them to death because they don't know how to control their ecosystems. <laughs> so they'll over harvest the ecosystems which causes them to decline in resources over time. So they, they have to continuously keep expanding otherwise they, they basically burn themselves out. But they're the slavers so they like to um, capture people and all fun, so fun slave stuff. And then the last one are the Morgi, which are one of my favorite. They're bird people. Now, the Morgi, um, they specialize in drones. Um, they can put more drones on their ship than any uh, any um, faction in the game. And they, um, I think they can arm their, their drones with the most amount of weapons as well. Which makes sense. They're bird people. <laughs> I don't think they have a whole lot of defenses. They have a lot of offense. Um, they don't have a lot of speed or defenses, but their offense and their um, long-range uh, um, support from their drones is superior to all the other factions. But uh, what we're going to do, if we're going to play, is the Leer. Because I like the Leer. They're pretty cool. And I usually like to pick this dolphin guy and uh, that symbol. And of course we're going to be green. Maybe like a jade green. I think that'd be pretty cool. And then we'll have seven other computers being completely random. Let's be xenophobic, it's really in this year. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess that's I guess that does make sense. But these uh these custom backgrounds like this one here is provided by the, the mod that's in the game. They're really cool. This space factory that's building some sort of ship. System update. There was the whale people. Alright, so this is our home planet, Viest. And as you can tell, since we're dolphins, we basically have ocean planets. So let's go into research and pick our first research that we're going to need. And as I zoom out, you guys will notice that there is a ton of research in this game. Most of it is not unlocked, but a lot. this game has tons of research and a lot of these things are um, randomly generated. So every playthrough you do, you'll have a different uh, research you'll, you'll uh, start out with. Now, um, there's some like ones that are like, you know, permanent, like Particle Beam and Plasma Cannon are always like first research you get in Energy Cannons. Um, battle computers will always be here because that's kind of required to advance that tech. But like after particle beam, there's a chance that we might not get a beam above that. So it's like stuff like that is randomly generated. But what do we need to research first? Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy. I think frigate construction. Oh yeah, with the mod, we don't actually start with frigate class ships like we normally do when we play this game. We actually have to research it. It's our first industry research. What do we get? Uh, we have the, a tanker, a col colonizer, an explorer, and we could build a small satellite with some guns. Hmm. Nice. Yeah, I totally forgot about that. We can't actually build military ships at the very beginning of this of this mod. Um, we can only uh, we have to research that. We only have exploration ships. Interesting. Okay. Good to know. So I think for the time being, um, there are a lots of biological of, of research we can do. Like we can research plagues and whatnot and use them to shoot at enemy planets to either take them over, pollute them to the point where everyone dies off of it, or um, do some like other crazy things. There's a lot of really, really cool research we get in this game. Like uh, another cool one um, in the ballistic weapons, we can get a siege cannon, which allows us to equip a, a large capital ship with a giant rock launcher to shoot at, at a planet to destroy it. <laughs> or at least wipe out the population. It was, I love this game so much. 
Um, but I think the first thing we're going to need... I don't think we're going to need Frigga construction. Hmm. Cybernetic interface, what do you do? A mind machine interface allows for a single being to control fleets of machines. Hey, look, we can make Karen. Allows ships to be built more... 5% more efficiently and increase the industrial output of all worlds by 20%. Okay, I guess I... Let me explain that stuff real quick before we actually start building this game. So, this stuff over here, this is uh, all the stuff that's on our planet. Size 10, this tells you the size of the planet. This ranges between 1 and 10. Since this is our home world, it always starts out as the largest planet. Resources, 5,000. This is how many... Um, uh, well, resources that are on the planet, which determines how big our industry is. The more resources there are, the larger the industry can be. Infrastructure, um, this is how developed the um, industry is. The larger this number is, the more well-developed it is. And this is 200%, by the way, because it's the main planet. We get a, a bonus. Imperial population, uh, 2 billion. This is how many uh, people currently live on the planet. And uh, this is um, like people that are like loyal to... Um, to your faction because there can be re rebels and um, re there can be rebellions and stuff like that in this game too it's uh it's cool um civilian population uh, this goes with the imperial population and um the civilian population are the ones that will actually rebel if um if things get out of hand and they'll fight the imperial population if the civilian population wins then that they take over the planet and this becomes a neutral planet that uh, i no longer can control and i have to either destroy it or take it over again but civilian population as it grows will trade and make money on the planet through taxes and whatnot increasing the income on it and industrial output is how big your industry is. The larger this number is, the faster your ships can be produced. And in civilian population, this determines how much of the population will be civilian. I usually always keep it half. You go above that, then there won't be enough resources to sustain the planet, and you'll start getting a minus on resources. Overharvest, this allows you to consume more resources than normal uh, to give a boost to your industry output, but it'll give a permanent reduction to re resources. Planetary budget, how much of the um, of the economy is dedicated to constructing ships or to trading on the planet for more money. So yeah, there's a lot of fun things in this game. A lot, a lot of fun things. And one more thing I'll go over before we actually start playing the game. This is the, this is the, um, the, uh, the Empire budget. And it can get pretty complicated. First one up here is planetary income. This is a grand total of all the income of every single planet we currently own. Right now it's 233,000 because we only own one. Interest, this is how much money we're making on interest. And this does determine, uh, or this is based off of how much money you have in your treasury. The larger you have, um, the more money you get. If it's positive, you get 1% interest. If it's negative, you have to pay 10% interest. And yes, it is possible to soft lock yourself by spending too much money and not being able to uh, afford anything. <laughs> there is no limit of what you can do there. I think eventually what will happen is if, you're, if your economy goes in negative too much, your morale and your plants will drop to a point where they start rioting and then they'll just, they'll just take it over and you'll become an independent empire. I mean, you will be out of the game, but there'll be a bunch of independent empires in the game. These are all the different expenses. I'll go through it when we actually have that stuff available. And then projected treasury for next turn and projected change of treasury next turn. So as we do things, that will get more and more complicated. That's as, as simple as it gets right now. Um, And we might do cybernetic interface just to get a good boost on our industry. It'll take 28 turns. Hmm. Genetic modification. Allows you to genetically modify the characteristics of your colonists to improve population growth of alien worlds by 10%. Um, that's pretty good, but we need to do some exploring first before we really start getting that going. Frigate construction allows us to build military ships and lowers construction cost of ships by 10% and 15% in increase to industrial output on all planets. Um... Hmm. We need to focus on industry. We might get cybernetic interfaces. Yep. We have 
Okay, and now that we are starting to do our first research, um, you can see up here, this looks like um, we have one quarter of the pie going to research. Now the amount of money we make goes directly into research and we can adjust that here. I normally keep it about one third going to the income for treasury, which we can use to build up the treasury and uh, build ships and two thirds going to um, research. So now it'll be completed in 12 turns, which is a lot better than what we were currently doing. Okay, and the next thing we can do is design. And this is where we can customize our ships. Right now, we don't have a whole lot of options because we just started. Um, for the headpiece, uh, we, right now we only have standard command, which allows us to put one weapon on it. And at the moment, we only have two choices for weapons. This will be expanded as we get research going. Um, the middle part, we have the, um, which uh, determines the mission, which is the, the purpose of the ship. This one is a colonizer, which means this guy's purpose is to find planets and colonize them. We have Explorer, whose purpose is to go out and scout, because he has a, a long range to uh, to do that. Satellite, which is a defense, a little defense platform that we can put around our planets. And then Tanker, whose purpose is to hold a large amount of fuel so that your ships can fly through space and not um, run out of a uh, jump fuel and get stranded somewhere because that is totally something you can do. In fact, when Sword of the Stars first came out, um, there was a, um, there was a, you always had to check the, um, um, the ships to uh, refuel other ships, because for some reason it wasn't set to default. So you would always, like, send a fleet out, even though it, it says you can make it, and they'll run out of fuel halfway there because the tankers weren't filling them up. Anyways, we need to do some exploring. So what I usually like to do build a tanker and a colonizer and I will put them together uh, first off oh we don't have enough to build these in one turn okay. we don't have enough industry yet to build an explorer all right so let's build an explorer and then we will build a tanker and colonizer after them and this will put us down to negative 16,000 in the treasury, which is fine. This is the very beginning of the game. We'll be able to handle that. The steel singers will do just fine. But as you can see, now we have a little bit of a red lip in our on our pie because we're paying interest on the amount of money we own. So this can easily consume your entire pie if you're, you know, not careful. <laughs> Let's go ahead and end our first turn. System update. There we go. Now we have our little explorer guy. So let's have him go start exploring some of these new newest areas. We hear your song. And as you can see, he has a range of 34, which we can go into build to show you. Um, which is right here. This is how many uh, light years it can travel before it runs out of fuel. Because each one of these star systems are a certain amount of light years away. All right, can I build another one of these? Hey, we can, it'll be done next turn. So we'll have two explorers. We shall we steal and fire, Elder. Wield that steel and fire. Do it! System update. All right, another explorer. We'll have that one start exploring yes, that planet. Elder. We move as you command. We might as well build more of these. I'd like two more. We begin construction now. Let the exploring commence. System update. Okay. You go there. Turning into the black. Turning into the black. No, I didn't want you to go there. I wanted you to go to the one that's close to me. As you command, Elder. Oh, all the planets I have in my little cluster. Oh my. I hope some of them are good. System updates. Alright. Now I want to go ahead and build more of these. We shall we steal and fire, Elder. So they're all ready to go. 
System update. Okay, we have explored our first planet. And as you can see, out the climate hazard on this planet is 772, which is a very high value. Now, the more the higher the climate hazard is, the more polluted the planet is, which means it's going to require more money to stabilize it, and it's going to take longer for the planet to get fully developed. So, um, with a really high, it can be a really, really big investment into the Empire, especially this early into the game. Unfortunately, this one is too polluted, which means that I cannot colonize it because it's uh, unhabitable for my species. Now, with uh, biological research, we can reduce this, or we can increase our tolerance, so eventually we might be able to, to land on this one, uh, but it's uh, it wouldn't work. It might be a potential mining planet we could do in the future to improve our industry. Because we can mine these resources off in the future and then just deliver the resources to like our main planet to increase its maximum resources, which will improve its industry. I think you can do that to a certain point, and then it just um, you just won't have enough population to handle um, the amount of industry that you have on the planet. Which you can probably improve that with a different research. <laughs> Pretty much any problem in this game could probably be solved by some sort of secret research. But yeah, this is a size 7 with asteroids. With 4,470 resources. So if we could colonize this, this actually wouldn't be too bad. Because the way, the way the game does this, it's completely randomized. It throws a number between I don't know to I don't know for like the climate hazard. Like a really large number. And then for size, it's in, anywhere between 1 and 10. Resources, it's like between 2,000 and 7,000, I believe. I think that's the range, or it might be 1,000 to 8,000, or it might be 2,000 to 8,000, something like that. All I know is 5,000 is the middle ground. So anything above 5,000 for resources is great for industry. Anything above a size 5 for, for uh, planet size is great for population. So I'm going to tell this guy to move to another one. We need to figure out, are we like, oh, we're right in the middle of the freaking galaxy. Okay, well, this sucks. Um, I guess for now, you go back to the main planet. Yes, Elder. We move as you command. We'll get you filled up and we'll start moving to a different cluster. Alright, this one down here has been explored. And this one is 883 climate hazards, so it is way too high to be colonized. It's also a really small planet, a size 2, with 3,900 resources. So this, I wouldn't colonize this anyways. Um, it wouldn't be a really good starting planet. Alright, so same thing with you. Head back. We rise with the tide, Elder. Or how close? You can actually make it to that. Yeah. Turning into the black. Go ahead and start making your way to that one. And then next turn. System updates. Ooh, here we go, here we go. This is a really good planet. Holy crap, this is an amazing planet. 25 climate hazard. That means it's it's pretty much near as good as it's gonna be for my faction. I'm a size seven, so it's a really large planet, and 5,900 resources. So it's only going to cost us 3,800 resources per year um, to maintain its, um, or to uh, um, deal with the climate hazard on the planet doing, you know, destruction and whatnot on the planet. Cool. Because we we make 237,000. So that's, that's like nothing. So that is a really, really, really good starting planet. So now we need to take our colonizers. We make it without the tankers? No, you need a tanker, okay? Take you guys here. We hear your song. Hey, full sir. How you doing, man? Yeah, I got in the mood to play Sword of the Star, so I decided to do a stream of it. And we just found a really, really good planet for our second planet of our empire. We haven't had too many, too much luck exploring, but this was this was a jackpot. So we really have to make sure that this one develops right. And hopefully, there's there might be a colony trap on this planet. Because sometimes when you find a really good planet, there's usually some sort of uh, trap that will like destroy your colon your colonists. So hopefully not. 
We'll see. In the meantime, you... You make it to this system over here? You can, but you won't be able to make it back. Alright, you move back as well. We have received coordinates. Okay. Let's end our turn. System update. Ooh, our research is done. Victory, Elder. We have found the secret. Ooh. Hey, Renos. <laughs> yeah, Sword in the Stars. This is still one of my favorite RTSs, and I get in the mood to play it all um, sometimes. This is a good one. Holy crap. A size 9. 4,400. A little low on resources, but that's fine. It's a size 9 with only 80 climate hazard. That's another really good one. Okay. So let's move this fleet over here. We move between seconds. Get that going. And we have cybernetic interfaces now. So we have um, ships can now build 5% quicker, or require 5% less construction costs to build, and our industrial output increases by 20% throughout the empire. Fantastic. And that unlocks Predictive Gunnery, which is a simple AI targeting system which allows ships equipped with this technology to fire much more accurately. Um, that is a good technology, but it's a little bit, it's way too early in the game to get this because we don't even have the ability to build military ships yet. Um, export systems. Um, advanced software it allows for construction robots to function with a minimum of intelligent supervision. Allows ships to be built 10% more efficiently, so it reduces uh, construction costs by 10%, and increases industrial output on all worlds by 15%. Yep, let's get that going. We have been given all we need, Elder. Normally at this part, I try I decide if I want to start going into uh, biology or if I want to continue doing industry. And right now we've been getting pretty lucky with all the uh, um, with with some of the uh, planets we've been finding. So I'm gonna hold off on biology for a little bit longer. Okay, sweet. So now we got those going. Let's build ourselves some more colony and tankers. The steel singers are ready to build. And we'll get ready to start. Um, doing more exploring. This is all we're going to have in our little mini cluster. Um, so we have to start exploring other clusters and hopefully not finding AI. Or hopefully do finding AI. We at least know where they're located. Love that early industry? Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah, oop! System update. Yeah, because upgrading that put us up to 18,000 industry on our main planet. Very stylish graphical mods, too. Yeah, the combined mod is really, really nice. Like, these ships actually look really cool if we ever get into combat. They, lo they look... I haven't actually seen, like, the big um, dreadnoughts, because the last time I played this, I think I only got to cruiser tech. Um, actually, I think I was just getting the cruiser tech. Because the one thing about the combined mod is it does do a lot of balancing. Like, if I go into industry, you'll see here, we don't even have the ability to construct frigates yet. We only know how to to create um, exploration ships, not a um, military grade uh, frigate class yet. So I believe there's this, then there's advanced frigate, and then there's a like, cruiser. And I haven't gotten any higher than that. So they, they break down and add a, bu a bunch of different classes into the game, which is really, really cool. It makes it feel like it's uh, you know more fleshed out, which is nice. Let me take a quick drink real quick. Yeah, yeah, it sucks, uh, Ruminus. I see what you're saying. I mean, honestly, Sword of the Stars 2 isn't bad. Like, I, I like the fact that there's solar systems and not just planets. That was the one thing that was really, really cool about that game. Um, I do hate the mission thing, um, where you have to, like, make missions in order to make your ships move and to attack and raid things. That I thought that was a really dumb idea. Um, and the AI is really, really dumb in that game. Like, there's there's... There's a guarantee probably 30% of 
um, chance that if you play Sword of the Stars 2, the AI is going to bankrupt themselves. <laughs> the price of ambition? Yeah. I do. I really do wish they, they did a little bit better job with that. Um... I do like the fact that Sword of the Stars and Sword of the Stars 2 are the only games I know of where you can actually softlock yourself by spending too much money and not paying attention to your finances and going in debt. <laughs> it's a really fun, uh, really fun thing about these games. Alright, so you explore... Uh, we've explored our cluster. You have 25 fuel left. Yeah, you need to go back. You, um, that's only 11. Yeah, start exploring this cluster. Honestly, I might, yeah, I'm going to give you a tanker. We have received coordinates. We'll just rebuild some tankers. So those guys have a little bit longer range. Are ready to build. Let's end our turn. System update. Alright. And you are almost there. Fantastic. Um you're you're almost to your destination. System update. Ugh. Okay, this is this is a no-go. 287 climate. That's not too bad. That's about moderate. Um, so it'll it'll take quite it'll take a little bit long to build, but it's not like not gonna take a hundred turns or something. Size two, really really small. 4,200 resources below average, and it's gonna cost 43,000 to maintain. So no, not gonna do. Wait till the empire gets bigger, and I might decide to take that one. But for one of our our first planets, we need something that's that's going to not require too long to develop. We rise with the tide, Elder. We rise with the tide. Tide rise. Oh, wait. Can you actually make it back? Whoops. Okay. Well, you're just going to explore that area. And then I'll just delete you. <laughs> when you run out of fuel. Wait, did I not? Did I not send? Not send? I am so bad at my job. Boys, get up here. Turn into the black. Yeah, you turn into the black. That's that's still a weird saying to me. You guys, I want you to go somewhere. Um, over here, down here. Um, uh, yeah, As go down there. Command, Explore that cluster. Oh, I see what you're saying, Fossilder. Um, for me, I'm very, I'm very picky at the very beginning of the game because I really, um, once we get like five, six, or seven colonies that are decent and not being paid uh, for col colony development, um, then I don't really care what I get. I just grab whatever is available. But until we get to that point, I'm usually really, really picky. Because this, if we make the wrong decision and spend like fifty thousand um, dollars developing a planet, and then taking like fifty turns before it actually starts turning a profit, we could lose the game. Because <laughs> the AI is ruthless in this game. Uh, yeah, we yeah we explore that. I don't know why it was still giving me the. Oh, that's because it's still the same turn. Never mind. But I usually go until I get about a third of my plan of my budget. No, about half of my budget on um, planetary development. Then I stop. I wait till it goes down to a quarter, and then I'll start colonizing again. All right, you guys made it. Please colonize. A new sea to explore. I really think this is going to be a colony trap. It just... It feels too good to be true. And usually on these really big planets that are like require no no uh, maintenance whatsoever to uh, maintain, they're typically a trap. To new so I'm going to send another colony fleet behind them. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, that's a good strategy, um, Ruinous. Um, 
I, I do like make sure I keep an eye on planets, but when I get to the point of I can actually mine, I'll I'll take them. Like this one. This one's very polluted. And it's close to the main planet, so this is a really good mining opportunity whenever we get the cruisers, which is really, really far away. Because we have we have uh, basic frigates to research, advanced frigates to research, and then we have cruisers. And I don't know what's above cruisers because I haven't gone that far in this mod. Because usually by then, the AI starts overwhelming me. <laughs> Yay, we got another planet! All right, so if I remember right, flashing red means there's not enough a population to keep the industry running, which means we have to focus on terraforming. And then once that turns solid, that means that there's more population than industry, so then you start focusing on infrastructure to bring that back up. I think someone in one of the uh, YouTube series that told me about that, which is a really cool head because I never knew why that flashed. That should grow very, very quickly. Because I think the dolphins have a pretty fast um, pretty fast growth rate. Because, well, they're dolphins. Dolphins are known for mating. System updates. Ooh, a decent amount of resources. 6,000. Size 3, but 436. That's going to take too long to develop. Keep exploring. We rise with the tide, Elder. We rise with the tide. The tide rises with thee. He does the rising of the tide. Okay, that wasn't actually a trap. I am pleasantly surprised. I was swear that this was going to be a colony trap. But cool. Colonize that one. A new ocean awaits. A new ocean of weights. Um, and you, Tanker, I'm gonna move you back. So we can build a colony ship. We shall we steal and fire, Elder. We got still got ten more turns until that research is done. And we are using a small amount of our uh, resources for planetary development now. Hooray! Keep an eye on you. I don't need to micromanage this, but very beginning, I like to micromanage. Um, ooh, you are an ice planet. 830 uh, climate hazard. Size 4, 3,888 resources. You're useless to me. So we need to, ex can I explore another one? I can. We hear your voice coming to new Barry. Yeah, yeah, that's one of the things I love about this game too. The difference of uh, um, all the different FDLs, like like the Lear use flicker drives, the uh, Tarkas use hyperdrives, humans use node drives. It's it's really cool. <laughs> uh, doop, doop, doop. Hey, you're exploring. You're exploring. You're exploring. Um, we have this one. Or, or, oh yeah, we get it next turn. That's right. End turn. We have almost a million saved up. Sweet. System updates. Alrighty. Now we own the one tickle. Move you guys back here. We move between seconds. So now we have three colonies under under our uh, under our control. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, the Stellaris did have like a, I think it was like warp drive, hyper drive, and then like another drive. Hmm. I didn't know they all just went straight to the hyperspace method. But I guess that is, you know, helps with balance purposes, I guess. Yeah, Sword of the Stars was a really, really ambitious game. And at least the first one did it very well. And for you, honestly, I don't really need to balance you. You're gonna grow like crazy. That probably you only require like twenty climate hazards. So yeah, we could focus on getting terraforming done, just to get that climate hazard down super quickly. Yeah, focus on infrastructure. Get that developed quickly. How's this one doing? We're not doing too bad. 
Oh wait, I think that's the opposite. Let's see, 60, 50. I can't remember. If it's red, does that mean there's not enough industry to um, keep the population going? Or does that mean there's not popu enough population to keep the industry going? I always get confused on which one that one means. I want to say it's population. It needs more terraforming. I can never remember. Alright, so that guy's exploring over there. That guy's exploring over there. We need more exploration ships going. We need to keep exploring these asteroids or these fields and finding um, more suitable planets. All suitable planets for... I was going to say the Russian Navy. <laughs> That's not who the Lear are. More suitable planets for Zilea. Um, actually, before we end that... Um, I want to build probably, yeah, let's build more explorers with more tankers. The steel singers are ready to build. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. System update. There we go. There we go. Ooh, we got another planet explored. Oh, that's another piece of crap. Size three, 3,500. 504 climate hazard. Grrr. We hear your song. But luckily, we'll have an advantage because we found two very good, very large, and um, very low populated or low polluted planets. So we're going to have a good advantage here in the very beginning of the game. Especially once these guys get developed, which this one's getting close. He's about to break even. Okay, we got a couple more turns for that one over there. And we got one more turn until we discover this planet here. Uh-oh. Hmm. Okay, let's see what this is. An asteroid monitor. Okay. I <laughs> have the flicker drives. I love the flicker drives. Alright, boys. Do not engage. Run away. Yeah. Oh, well, there goes that ship. So here, here's the the, uh, the graphical mod upgrade. So it makes the backgrounds a little bit better. Asteroids look better. Our ships look a whole lot better. And the planets are pretty good. Uh oh. Oh, dude, it, it was nice knowing you. Here come some ships or some units. <laughs> He's dead. Nope. Although that planet looks pretty good. System update. So we'll have, we have to keep an eye on that one. The, the planet looked like it wasn't really that polluted. Yep. Initiate Stutter Warp. Full power. Get the heck out of here. Okay. Now we need another explorer. Get exploring that area. We move between seconds. We move between seconds. Um. We rise with the tide, Elder. Go over there. We have one more we can use to explore. I guess go south. Or not south. Down. There is no south in space. Okay. Oh, that was the one I had exploring over there. Okay, okay. Just making sure. System update. That's not a bad planet, but it's super polluted. So that'll be a good mining planet. Size 7, 5,600 resources. Not too bad at all. And you have no fuel. So, bye-bye. We hear and agree. <laughs> Farewell, faithful vessel. You were good to us. Um, you're not what I wanted. Explorer, tanker. 
Oh, okay. That's good to know, Fooser. <laughs> I just assume that there's no south because in 720 degrees there's no such thing as south. There's just bottom. Um. Okay. We still have two colonizers and I'm trying to wait to actually use something left. Oh, ah, okay. Never really played too much of StarCraft. I think I was I was into Warcraft and um and well whole world um a lot when StarCraft was really big. That and I don't think I had a computer to actually run it properly. At least at the time. Alright, and you um I can make you go up. Yes, Elder. We move. So many small clusters. Command. Move there. Okay, well we have a lot of exploring going. We just haven't found anything suitable yet. System updates. Hey, our research got done. We have made a breakthrough, Elder. Size three, three thousand six hundred fifty-two thousand. Good. You suck. It means something good. I know everything's randomly generated in this game, but geez, please, give me something good. So, yay! Our industry output has increased by another 15%. Awesome. And that didn't unlock anything else. Um, next, I think we're going to start getting frigate construction. This will again increase our industry even more by another 15%. And also make it 10% easier to build our ships and give us the ability to uh, make armored ships. At least the basic version of armored ships. All facilities in order and ready to study this problem. So what's our industry now? 21,000? Wow. <laughs> we have a lot on our main planet now. How are you guys doing? You are doing fantastic. Awesome. Um, you actually now can start developing more of your industry. And uh, same thing with you. Cool. Coming up to 1,000 population. This one's up to 3,000. Cool planets being developed. And once all three of these get developed, we could probably start taking some of these ones that aren't the best. System updates. Hmm. Nothing new this turn. Bring you up there. Well, I want to keep. I want to keep actually doing stuff. So let's build a couple more explorers. We shall leave steel and fire, Elder. System updates. There we go. You guys, yes, we're down there. We move as you command. And you, it's another cluster I haven't explored or started exploring. We that move one. Between seconds. Okay, we have one, two, three, four, five. We have like six exploration fleets going up right now. Something's bound to find something good. System updates. Oh, hey, we found a volcano planet. Well, that's not good. <laughs> and one thing I do like about this mod as well, um, as you can see, the climate hazard, this one is all the way up to the right, which means it's super hot, which is why it looks like a volcano to us. Where there's one we explored earlier that was, looked like an ice planet because it was all the way over to the left. So I love the fact that this mod actually makes it to where it's not just, you know, one texture for a planet that's out of your uh, out of your jurisdiction. It actually depends on if it's super hot or super cold, so I love that. Uh, but this is a size 7 with 2,900, so this, it's a good size, but it doesn't have a lot of resources. Although it does have an asteroid field, so we could take advantage of that in the future. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, so you go there. 
and no one else has found a planet yet but i think we're gonna get about two of them and explore it in the next step in the next uh, episode <laughs> next turn let's get that going oh we got three explored awesome you size four three thousand eight hundred four hundred ninety seven climate answer yuck 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 we hear your song all right, what about you? Ooh, here we go, here we go. Size 7, 4,400. Um, only 18 climate hazard. Resources are a little low, but it's a large planet with low climate hazard. Fantastic. You. Start making your way to that planet. We have received coordinates. This is going to be difficult to defend. This is pretty pretty far away. But it's... It can, it's a pretty large size, so it can it can build its own military when it gets big enough. We hear your voice coming to new bearing. <laughs> Respectfully, Elder, the Prussy is not popping. Not at all. Uh, what do we have down here? Uh, this is a size 3, 3,300. It's got a good climate hazard. 137. It wouldn't be too difficult to develop. It only cost twenty thousand a turn. Um, that's almost ten percent of our income. By almost, I mean it's probably closer to eight or seven percent. Um, well, this would be our fifth planet, which means I'm getting close to the point where I don't really need to be super picky when it comes to finding planets, because we we do have. Yeah, this planet is really good. Uh, this one is a really large. But it resources are okay, and this one's pretty good too. So these these aren't like small, like nitpicky planets. This one is though. Hmm. I want this planet. Um, I want to throw this one in the maybe category. Yeah. Is it? Well, okay. Screw it. If I'm contemplating too much, that probably means it's good. Yes, <laughs> I'm just overthinking it. We move as you so we'll add this one to the to the empire. We'll continue exploring. We move between seconds. And I think that was the last one. Yeah, because this one this one was icky. Uh, this one was good, and this one was okay. Also. Oh, whoops. He, he, um, you go over here. We rise with the tide, Elder. I need a tanker. Actually, build me a couple tankers. The steel singers are ready to build. System update. <laughs> oh yeah, a volcano plants be great for strip mining. All right, you guys go down there. Okay, what's this one? Ooh, now these are the ones I hate. Size seven, decent size. It's larger than average. 5,900 resources, good on resources, but 355 climate hazard and costs 53,000 a turn to, to maintain until it gets um, populated. Because of that, I'm gonna have to put it on the maybe category until we get more until we get more income coming in to uh, support a planet like this. But I hate it when I find ones like this because it's like it's good, but it requires development. <laughs> I need to probably get this closer to a million on income, and then I'll feel comfortable colonizing that planet. So that one is definitely a maybe. We have received coordinates. But I think the, one of the cool things I love about this game is just its random generate, its random generator when it comes to coloni colonies, because every single size, all of the size, resources, climate hazard is all random, randomly generated when the game is uh, produced. So next time we play this, this these systems here will be completely different, and I love that about Sword of the Stars, and probably one of the reasons why I like coming back to it after a while. Every playthrough is different. System update. Okay, how are Ooh, our research had done? Problem is solved. Cool. 
Um, okay, I'm probably just going to even you out and just let you do your thing, because you're growing really quickly because you're a little climate hazard. Um, probably the same thing with this planet, just even it out, because here in about five, six more turns, uh, that terraforming should be done. <laughs> yeah, hopefully we don't find a Sith Lord and then have to deal with that nonsense. Hopefully we didn't accidentally stumble in that galaxy. But yay, so now we have frigate construction. This unlocks a reflective coating, um, so we can get uh, the ability to um, defend ourselves against lasers. Um, I think reflective coating strictly only does lasers in this mod. Subsurface layer, highly reflective, uh, ceramatic to defeat incoming laser fire. Yeah, this this doesn't and in, um, in the uh, vanilla game, um, reflective coating would uh would reflect uh, a mass drivers as well. In this one, it doesn't. It only does lasers. The next, this unlocks advanced frigate construction. So orbital bases in the process of metals in zero g. It's the orbital base um, research lowers the financial cost and the physical cost of ships construction by five percent and making larger ship holes possible. So that allows us to put more weapons on a frigate class ship. But if we go to design, you guys will notice that we have a light frigate. Which I kind of like the light frigate hole. There's like little like little, little turret spots for uh um for the ship. So this is weaker. Um this one is weaker than the the, the armored frigate um in vanilla because the armored one is the advanced frigate technology. We can we can put lots of lasers on the ship now <laughs> to defend itself. So I like that about this mod. So this is our first military ship. So I'm gonna name this guy. Um This this ship is just gonna primarily be used to defend our planets. So if we get hit by asteroids or something like that, we'll have some ships there to defend the planets against it. Um, because pretty soon random encounters should start spawning, because we're, we're about maybe almost 30 turns in the game. Um, I'll name it Light Patrol. Yes, Elder. Ship design ready for construction. Yeah, yeah, I, I had a, I had a playthrough a long time ago where, um, I think it was... I don't know how long it was. I think it was a. Uh, it had to be like thirty turns into the game, and the planet killer came up and tried to attack my um my main uh, planet, and I lost. <laughs> so it destroyed my economy. I'm like, what the heck? Where did you come from? Jeez. But yeah, that happens in this game, and it can be frustrating sometimes. But uh, okay, what do we want to research now? We have military ships now. Um, probably gene modification would be next, um, to help improve, uh, population growth. Hmm. Maybe. Because the Lear, I don't think, get a whole lot of, uh, biological... Well, maybe. Maybe they do get a whole lot of biological research. I don't know. I don't know how adaptive they are to other planets compared to, like, the, uh, monkeys and whatnot. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I, I always kind of like the the Lyra design, as it, it does look like it does look like a giant catfish. Um, and this will improve our population growth rate by ten percent, which will help us. Yeah, this is only gonna take four turns, anyways. We we'll get that done. Need, It'll help our planets grow a little bit quicker. Okay, what did you find? Ooh, this one's not too bad. Size 6, lar larger than average, 6,600. A lot of resources on this planet, and 24,000 on cost. Yeah. Yeah, we might take this one, too. I also have to make sure I keep an eye on my, my ships going around. <laughs> so, cool. Um... So now I need you to explore this one. Boop. Boop. Move you here. As you command, Elder. 
we'll get that one going. What's our, how's our finances looking? Hey, we're almost up to 300k. Fantastic. System update. <laughs> That's a good point, Fuller. Um, Fuseler. Sorry, I keep getting your name wrong. But um, yeah, I, I kind of think of it as Sins of a Solar Empire, if it was turn-based for like this mode, and Homeworld in the combat mode. But uh, but yeah, Master of Orion is also another really good um, really good comparison. Um, okay, what did we find here? Pretty much an, about the most average planet as you can find. Size five, five thousand five hundred, and about a moderate amount of climate hazard. That is an average Joe planet. <laughs> That's not too bad. Might keep that on the. Uh, on the um, list for once we break a million and we just start colonizing everything. That'll be one of the planets we go to. We but also, glorious. we can build military ships. So, so let's go ahead and start getting some light patrols on our planet. So we have some defenses. The are ready to also, I believe we have to stay above a million to keep our morale up. Yeah. We get plus one morale when we're above a million, which cancels out the uh, the negativity we get when civilians max out. I think we have to get it up to 10 million to keep that always at 100. And I believe we get a buff on our on our um, trade whenever uh, morale is at 100 all the time, if I remember. Something like that happens. But anyways, so you are exploring down there. You guys are going over there. Kind of surprised we haven't ran into an AI yet. There's seven AIs on this map. I say that and we find one. Of course. That's how it always works. <laughs> um, so it looks like we have hybrids down here. Oh, this might be their main planet. They have satellites on it already. Okay. Let's take a look at them. I don't believe they'll actually attack us. Oh, it's an independent colony. Never mind. It's not a main faction. Alright boys, um, do not engage, turn all weapons off. We are, in harmony. are you though? Whoa, hello there. Oh, this is a cool map! So you have the planet over here, that's actually a moon to the, ma to the, the planet on the map. That would be one giant planet, holy crap. This is like a, um, honestly, this reminds me of Kotar in a way, when you had to go to um, the uh, the Mandalore planet that was like, that was a moon orbiting a giant planet. <laughs> yeah, nothing could go wrong with uh, um, messing around with genetics that, that make you grow a third leg so you can run faster. Nothing go nothing ever goes wrong with those plans. They're always genius. No! No! Don't hit me! I'm fragile! Ow. My engine. My whole my heart. My heart is in pieces. They ripped me into pieces. I turn my weapons off and this is how you pay me. No! Don't hit me, I'm fragile! Do they? Is that what's going on? I thought I thought this was their embassy. We have been defeated. Okay. Well, at least now we know this is an independent faction down here. I think we only had one more to explore in that, that area anyways. What do we have over here? This is a pathetic planet. 539 climate hazard, size 5, 2800. Get that, get that crap away from me. We hear your I want you in my... Coming to new I want you in my faction. Uh, but what about this one? It's kind of a an average one. Size 4, uh, 5400 and 142. 
Uh, yeah. That's not. That's definitely not a gold mine planet. Speaking of gold mines, um, have my colony ships made it to where they're supposed to go yet? Pretty sure they might have. Colony ships. Oh, you're still on the way. You're still on the way. We got these two guys over here. Ooh! Found something. We found the we found the bird people. They're in that sector. Okay. Good to know. I could have swore I sent out a third colony ship. I don't remember where I put it. Hmm. It's not scary at all. Oh, here it is. Okay. They're all going around the same area. So it's these three right here. Okay. Good to know. I have too many fleets moving around! I don't know how to react to anything. Yes, Skeletor. We move as you command. Alright, so next, next one we get to see the... Uh, on the morgue. They have a scout over there. System update. Oh, we didn't actually make it. Okay, I guess we get to see him next turn then. Go figure. Uh, wow. You're basically a giant ice moon. Size 2, 2,000 resources, 600 climate hazard. Yeah, I'm not exploring that one. <laughs> We rise with the tide, Elder. That is not gonna happen. All right, how's our new planets doing? Uh, you, you're doing pretty good. Not bad. Bad at all. Also, we over budget. No, we have one more turn. Okay. Um, you're about to break even. Mm-hmm. It's easy to do. It's very easy to do on a map like this. I would say that's probably one of uh, sort of the star's um, uh, frustrating things, especially in the beginning when you're trying to explore a bunch. And especially if you're in my situation where the game decided to spawn you in the middle of the map, um, it can be kind of confusing to try to keep track of all of your fleets. I'm sure there's a button or something, um, if I remember, that shows where all of our fleets are. But um, I don't remember where it is because I don't really use it that much. We have one, we technically have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven fleets moving around right now. And three of them are, co are uh, colonization fleets. <laughs> uh, so yeah, could be a little crazy. But hey, we got our light patrols. I'm going to set these guys. Um, I believe I could set them to defend. I want you to defend. There it is. Flag as guard. So now if I... Like this, they will no longer pop up. They'll be considered guarding that planet. Okay, so now you, um, you're another one I found. Size three, five thousand nine hundred resources, eight hundred forty-two climate hazard. Completely useless to me. So you move in that direction, and we might build some more. Nope, not, not military ships. Um, build me more explorers. And then build me more colonizers. Yes, Elder. The vessels will be completed soon. Let's go ahead and end our turn. <sighs> Ew. Um, we have a scout. I kind of want to see him, but we'll just... We'll give him peace. System update. Hey! We have made a breakthrough, Elder. They did not engage us. Um, I think that's another thing that they adjusted in this mod, where if you meet an AI for the first time, they always pick up peaceful instead of um, always attacking you. So stuff like this always works. 
Uh, so let's see, this is a size 4, 5,800 resources, and 347 climbing hazard. And it's way too far away from the Empire to really properly manage, especially since I think this is their system. So let's move up, explore something else. Although we're taking this planet in their system too, so <laughs> go figure. Hey, another AI. Uh, the Tarkas are over here. Okay. And just start gathering some intelligence like the AI usually do to us. Boop. Boop. Nope. I made the move you in that direction. Yes, Elder. We move as you command. Yes, Shelter. We command as you move. We move between seconds. Oh yeah, well I remove I move between minutes. How do you like that? Oh cool, we got plague. Sweet. And so we can research plague, a bioweapon designed to kill any carbon-based species delivered to enemy plants via large biomissiles. Each impact should affect 20% of the planetary population unless the enemy possesses the vaccine. So yeah, biological warfare. Fun fun. fun. And then we have suspended animation, allows you to place colonists in suspended animation for transport to their new world and increase their base population. Uh, so this is good for planets that are very, um, have very high climate hazard to give you a small boost in um, industry so that you can have more people on the ground. And then we have atmospheric adaption, allows you to genetically modify the respiration systems of your colonists to improve population growth and optimize terraforming on alien worlds. Results as a 75 point increase to in, in, uh, in, in climate hazard tolerance, and that's in both directions, up and down, and a 6% overall increase in population growth. The resulting greater understanding atmospheric components also reduced results in a 25% increase in terraforming efficiency. So this one has been buffed from vanilla, because I don't remember this actually gives you terraforming efficiency. I think it was just um, tolerance increase in population growth. Although it probably did, and I just don't remember it. Uh, but anyways, yeah, that might be the next one we work on. Oh, wait, yeah, we can start working on translating some of the AI. But right now, there's we're still in, like, heavy exploration mode, so that's not really useful. So, yeah, atmospheric adaption. We have been given all we need, Elder. Oh, I see. Yeah, I, I enjoy playing in 3D maps just because, you know, Homeworld was like my first space, like RTS game. So like, I just learned that understanding this for some reason is easier in my brain than understanding a 2D map. <laughs> At least when it comes to space games, but I'm just kind of weird like that. Uh, let's see, did I already have you moving? Sorry, yep, I did. Are you going to remember if I told you to move or not? So move down there. We have a new one down here that we just explored. No, wait, that's that's the one that uh, we found them on. Okay. Have our ships made it to their destination yet? We can colonize planets. New. They're almost there. This guy's almost there. Also, it might not be a bad idea to get engine research next. Improve our engine drives. We can get overthrusting, uh, which is for our pursuit ships. It's nothing we can really get. Um, we can get a... Uh... Oh, we didn't get pulse fission. Aw, sad face. Let me just go straight to fusion. Can get deflectors, though. That's nice. Light photon cannons. There's also a couple really good missile researches we get in this mod. Um, I think one of them is like um, heavy missiles, which I think was in the base game. I don't quite remember. Um, and there's a couple like a couple other ones I can't quite remember, but they're really cool. And I hope we get them in this this playthrough. Uh, but we have hybrid weapons in this mod, like light photon cannons. Uh, have a very low range but high damage output. They count as laser weapons and can be countered with reflective armor. 
very expensive to build as well. So, really cool. And beamers! Hey, we got beamers. That's my favorite research. There's, there's basically many ion cannons you can just put all over your ship. They're fun. I love beamers and I love the lightning one, but the lightning one can get annoying with its sound effect. <laughs> Uh, okay. So we have you going, okay, we have that one going to that one, that one going to that one, and this one going down here. So this is going to get there first. Cool. System updates. And by get there first, that means we can get there next turn. Because that's apparently how it works. Uh, you're a piece of crap. God dang it. <laughs> 105 climbing hazard. That's that's actually really good, but you're a size two of 4,600 resources. Oh, you're too far away from the Empire for me to really care. You're literally on the other side of the galaxy compared to my Empire. Hmm. Don't you be? Never mind. That's that's where you were. I thought that I thought that faction was exploring that one. All right, move you up. We hear your song. Okay. Looking good. Zendar Darn. We have a lot of money. Whoa. Oh, yeah, we found the Tarka. So Tarka is going to be peaceful too. System updates. Hey, look at that. They were peaceful. Ooh, they have a purple world. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Prohibitive. Uh, it's a little bit too polluted for us. 3,300 resources. Nice. It's kind of a run in the mill um, system of lower resources than normal. We hear your voice coming to new bearing. Alright, 506, too much pollution. Size 5 with uh, 6,100 resources. Not bad. Let's move you. Um, I guess we'll move you down here. Yes, Senator. We move as you command. How nice this planet. That brings us up to four. Fantastic. Ooh, this one has over a million, and he's about to actually start making us money. Nice. Mm -hmm. And now it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to start moving these guys. Dang it, I need tankers. Never mind. I was going to move them over to these planets so they have something to protect them. So let's go ahead and get that queued since we actually have the, the economy to handle this right now. So give me... We only need one tanker. And build me 10 more light patrols and another tanker. We begin construction now. Oh, and then build me 10 more light patrols for the main planet. There we go. We shall leave steel and fire, Elder. Okay, you're literally a... Well, uh, if you didn't have low resources, this one probably wouldn't be too bad. Because um, we are starting to make, getting close to starting to make money with our first two starter planets, so I don't have to be as nitpicky as I currently am. How's this one? Oh, I just looked at that one. It's just, it's still the same turn. It's still the same turn. Let's go ahead and end it so I stop confusing myself. System update. Alright, what do we have here? Uh, size 4, 3,400, 180. Hmm. Why must you be small? Although these ones, yeah, they'll still take a pretty good chunk of our, of our income. As you command, Elder. What's this one? Ooh, this one, this one's more tempting. Size 6, 6,000. 
No. You are tempting. You are very tempting. Any other plants we found? No, not really. You guys have arrived at your destination. We will make a new home here. Kill. And this one's about to make it to its destination. Awesome. This will put us up to five. Five colonies in the Empire. Yeah, I think once those two get mostly developed, which shouldn't take long, it will take about five or ten turns. Yeah, we can start colonizing the ones that are more iffy, which means I probably should just go ahead and start building um, some tankers and whatnot once I get this part done. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Tanker, move you here. We have received coordinates. Yeah, once we get all that done, we'll start building some more colonizer and tankers start taking over some of the planets that are iffy we should we should be able to handle them by then quote unquote should be should be tm update. all right any new planets at this one over here which again is average Oh boy, I'm finding all the average Joes. We move between seconds. And you have one more. Yeah, one more turn until you actually get there. Okay. I forgot to tell you to move. We rise with the tide. Oh wait, you, you explored that last one. Which is 535. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Um, move there. Into the black. And where did I park my colony unit? That's one of them. Um, 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 oh, okay, so that, that's the last one. All right. I think I'm learning. I think I'm understanding what this giant mess of, uh, of ships flying all over the place means. <laughs> System update. All right. Doing more exploring. You guys have made it. Go ahead and colonize. We will make a new home here. And I'm going to focus more on getting research done. Since we're going to, since more of our money is going to be going to planetary development. <laughs> Three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, and tanker. Here we go. Move you up here. We have received coordinates. And next turn we'll get all that stuff done. Okay. Getting that planet under our control, which will give us planet number six. And then now we can start going around. And getting the ones that are like, like this one, that will be potentially good in the future. The ones that require a little bit more TLC to get to get going, but still don't won't destroy our economy from a planetary development.
Uh oh. Um. Okay, we got the Tarkas, which we will peaceful that one. Oh boy. Oh, this one might have been a colony trap. Okay. And this one's probably like an alien derelict or something. All right, well, we got a couple fights to do. Alien wreckage. Oh, that's a cool wreckage. Oh, we're at Nebula. Oh, God. Um, run. Quickly, flicker drives. Run! Run away from the wreck! Oh, they got cutter beams. Okay. Um... Well, that's new. That's definitely part of the mod. New and terrifying. And this is a colony trap. Okay, cool. So we're just gonna lose our colony ships on this one. Well, then don't, don't let them drag you down! Run for your life! Run for your life! It's the IRS! I love the, I love these ones that have the, the giant planet in the background, though. The sun over there. Yeah, I wonder what kind of technology we can get from an alien wreck. Hmm. That's what I want to know. I mean, it looked like those guys had cutter beams, so... Maybe, maybe cutter beam technology? No! Run away! You will not take me with you! I will not die today. Yeah, we got annihilated. That was that was very quick. <laughs> yeah, you get him, turret. You shoot that thing. You tell it we don't want to be sucked into its planet of global destruction. I'm kind of surprised they haven't sucked us in yet. Maybe we'll actually escape. I mean, we only have to stay alive for 30 more seconds. Yes, we hear you. Hmm. We're too fast for them. I wonder if it's something to do with our inertialess uh, um, engines. Maybe they make it where we go too fast for them. We are in harmony. Cool. This is the first time I ever survived one of these things. This is awesome. We must withdraw for the moment, Hey, we survived the colony System trap. Update. Well, that was fun. <laughs> okay, this thing has an alien wreck on it. Hmm. Good to know. Good to know. Okay. Uh, nope, I want fleet lanes on. Sensor network would actually help me identify things a little bit better. There we go. We have a ship up here. We have one down here moving, that one down there moving. And we have a new one over here. Cool. I'll go political map. You only know me. <laughs> Galactic Axis is... Oh, that's cool. You can pinpoint where you are from the, in the galaxy. Nice. Might keep sensor mode on for a bit, just so I know where everything is. That is a pathetic map. You're not even worth reading. Yes, Marcos, I wish you luck with, luck with that part of the galaxy. You You're going to need it. Okay, so let me try to get a roll call of everything I have going on. Um, we just have an explorer going down, exploring that, that chunk of the galaxy. We have another explorer exploring this chunk of the galaxy. Okay. Uh, the same thing. A third one over there exploring that chunk. <laughs> We're exploring like four different chunks of the galaxies right now. Amazing. And we have another one over here. Um, we have this guy over here who survived the colony trap, which means we can colonize this planet. We will make a new home here. 
Chu. <laughs> I like to think it's it's leftover. I like to think it's like debris from a planet killer that got destroyed. And just over time, AI just like infested it. So now it's like it, it sees anything and destroys it. That's got to be something high tech because of the fact that those fighters have uh, freaking cutters on them. It's amazing. Uh, so we have lots of exploring going on. And yep, we need to start colonizing. Uh, no, no, that's... I uh, need more... No more colonizers. I need more tankers. We shall be steel no! and fire elder. Here we go. You boys, I need to find a planet that is suitable. Uh, that one's not too bad. 251k. We're actually looking pretty darn good. We're making $250,000 on our main planet. We have a 24,000 industry output. Awesome. I love how much that goes up with beginning tech now. It's so cool. Um, so yeah. We might get this one. It's basically an average Joe planet, but I think that's about, about as good as we're going to find around here. Yeah, because that one's small. These ones are too polluted. Oh, wait. Hang on. Change course. This one. Because it's large and has lots of resources. And it's closer to the home base. Okay. End our turn. System update. Here we go. We now have another planet under our control. We have six. We have three of them that are being um, um, heavily uh, heavily built. <laughs> the terraformed, I should say. There we go. You, yeah, you need... Uh, honestly, I'm just going to keep you weaving. You have very low climate hazard. Your, your population is going to grow rapidly. Okay. Well, cool. we're using fifty-two thousand dollars on uh, on planetary development now. We got six more turns until we get atmospheric adaption done. We'll see if we get gravitational adaption, but that's usually where RNG starts coming in. Um. Oh, this is cool. This is a desert planet. So it's not quite hot enough to be a volcano planet. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, size 4, 6,000 resources, 839 climate hazard. Not bad. Or average, run-of-the-mill average. We have received coordinates. Okay, is there any other ones that are glowing red? Or glowing blue, I should say. Not red. I think we're good. I think we're good to go. Boop. End our turn. System updates. Whoa, lots of exploring done. Wow, four new planets. All right, let's check them out. This one, size two, 6,400 resources, costs 37,000 to colonize it. Um, climate hazard's not bad. A little bit, of, it's a little bit around medium, because I think our tolerance is like a little bit over 600. Actually, it's higher since we got a... Um, actually, it'll be higher once we get this one done. But I think it starts out around 600. Oh, yeah, that's that's a good point, um, Bruinus. That is a good point. We have no idea. Uh, so this one's not too bad. It's just really small. So I don't really want to colonize a size two. Uh, this one's a size three, not not as a uh, not as not quite as better, but it does have an asteroid field, which I think the other one did too. 
No, no, this one has an asteroid field. Okay. Which in the future we can uh, take advantage of that to improve the industry. Um, only 4,000 resources, though. Yeah. I like the other one better because it has more resources. But this one has less climate hazard. So both of these are on the okay category. And this one, 565 climate hazard, size 3, 2,700. You are an absolute dump. I would rather mine that living crap out of you than actually uh, colonize this. Even though it does have asteroid fields. But that's super low tier and super low priority for me. Just because of the high climate hazard. If we get lucky and get all of the cool... um terraforming researches that that one that one would be uh more um acceptable to uh, accepting it but if i colonize that planet right now it will literally take almost 100 turns to get it developed um to um be an actual good planet for us and that's a lot of turns to be wasting like eighty thousand resources <laughs> or eighty thousand dollars this one is ooh, this one has over seven thousand resources so this one is on the upper end on a amount of resources on the planet size for 217 climate hazard so it's about medium but this one has a lot of resources which means its industry is going to develop quickly and it'll, it'll cause it'll solve this problem uh quickly as well this one this one might be the next one that we colonize yes we move as you command. Yeah, out of all four of those, I think that one's the best choice. I think it's also the largest out of the four. It is. <laughs> That's amazing. Okay. So yeah, you. Keep exploring. We move between seconds. We move between hours. And you have one more turn until you discover that area. Okay. So yeah, we've so far we've gotten really lucky, but we've had a couple really good planets right next to our main planet. I mean, a size nine. I think, I think in um, in the Star uh, Sword of the Stars complete collection, it's impossible to find a size ten unless it's someone's home planet. Um. In the original Sword of the Stars I used to play all the time, you could find size 10s all the time. Because it was part of the uh, equation of the randomization of the um, of the planets. Where I think in the complete collection they took size 10 out and just made it for home planets. So a size 9 is as close as we're going to get. So that one, this one's a size 7. Yeah, both of these planets are really, really good. And they're they're starting to get a good industry going. So they're this one's at least making money. This one's getting really close to making money. Uh, did I give everyone move orders? I forgot to give you guys orders. Turning into the black. Okay. You're going down to colonize that planet. Okay. Now I do need to keep an eye on planets have been colonized um i might have to send some sort of fleet towards them some sort of protection fleet especially this one because this one's this one's really good i don't want to lose it to like a meteor shower that would suck Uh, do do do. So let's build more light patrols. We got money anyways, and we need to spend it. Build another light patrol fleet. Yes, Elder. The vessels will be completed soon. System update. All right. Something moves in the black, Elder. Oh my. Something strange. <gasps> Swarmers! Well, we found where the Swarmer homeworld is. Oh my, this... A size one with 7,000 resources. Really, game? <laughs> a teeny planet with tons of resources on it. Wow. I will not colonize that, because one, it's in Swarmer territory. Um, two, I'd definitely rather mine it because of its size. It's definitely better as a um, um, 
as, res as throwing those resources to an actual planet that can use them. Alright, so the swarmers are coming from that planet, which means they most likely have something there, so we're gonna go to this one. We hear your voice coming to new Lock and load, boys! We found the bugs! Um, so Reminis, what's your favorite way to kill the, uh, um, the swarmers? Like, what's your favorite weapon to use against them? Everyone moving around, yeah. Uh, we do have another colonizer we can send out somewhere. <laughs> Colonizers. Yeah, we have one going down there. Move one around here. Oh yeah, I think this was the next one I wanted to get. How are we doing? Um, we're at a quarter. I usually like to go up to half, so we can continue expanding. Yes, Elder. We move as in case, you command. In case you're curious what my answer is, um, the lightning turrets. If you if you get the, like the small and medium lightning turrets and just build a um like a, a fleet of ships and just cover them with your uh cover those turrets with your ships it's awesome <laughs> they just shoot everywhere and the swarmers just die instantly of course the only problem about doing that is it takes forever to kill the queen but the, the little swarmer guys flying around don't become a match anymore um yeah build me another tanker apparently i have two fleets ready System update. Oh, what are you? You are pretty average. <laughs> Size 4, 5,100 resources. Um, but you're very cheap. And we're getting to the point where we need to keep expanding. Uh, we're up to six colonies. I want more. All our, give me all of the, all of the colonies. I want all of them. Mm -hmm. Alright, move you boys. Um I think the next best one would be that one there. Move you here. <gasps> I don't have enough fuel. No! I can't reach it. That without more tankers. We need a lot more tankers. We need a lot more tankers. Okay, that's not gonna happen. We we'll have to wait until we get our fuel upgraded. The steel singers are ready to build. Oh, that's that's actually a pretty good idea. Have missile boats. I, I I normally don't use missiles much in this game. I need to use them more. Missiles and mines. Especially mines, because they, they just continuously drop and it's fun to like make a giant minefield and watch the enemy ships just run into it. <laughs> but yeah, I, I like using beamers. Beamers are really fun too. That's my second go-to. If, uh, but if I have lightning, I just like to make a ship and just name it like the lightning bolt or something. Just just cover it with uh, lightning turrets and just watch it zap all the uh, swarmers flying around. It's really fun. Uh, four, uh, another average in the mill. We're, we're getting to the point where it's harder to find really, really good planets. You guys actually ran out of fuel. Wow. Well, I hope you had a good life. No, don't refuel. Dang it. Refuel doesn't mean scuttle. We hear and agree. Farewell, faithful vessels. Alrighty. Um. So yeah, we need we need more anchors, which we won't get until next turn. So I can move these patrols out, and then build me more 
Um, I guess we don't always have to build it on this planet anymore. We begin construction now. Well, yeah, we gotta keep building on the main planet. <laughs> the secondary planets still aren't really good enough to uh, get all these uh, guys going fast. We shall leave steel and fire, Elder. Three, two, one. Happy birthday! Research is done. Hey, ooh, and we got both of them. We have found the secrets. Nice, nice, nice. So we can get terraform bacteria next. A genetically engineered mass growth bacteria that can alter a plant's atmosphere, thus increasing terraforming efficiency by a whopping 35%. That's massive. And then an environmental tearling. Um, allows you to gen genetically modify the entire psych uh, psychology uh, psychology of your colonists to improve population growth and optimize terraforming on alien world worlds. Increases population growth by 20% due to enhanced um, adaptivity, ad adaptability of the new environments and terraforming efficiency by another 35%. But it's starting to take a long time to get these research done, so I don't think we actually need these. But cool. Good to know that we got those unlocked. So. Upgrade psychotics. <laughs> hey, Brad. How's it doing, man? How's it going, man? And doing. You doing things? Where are you going with things? I don't know anymore. Uh, it sucks that we don't get pulse vision, but it might also be the fact that we have flicker drives. So we... we I don't think you can actually pulse a flicker drive. <laughs> yeah, going with things. Nice, man. Um, I get advanced frigate construction, but I don't think we need that stuff yet. No one's at war. We're still massively expanding into new territories. Um... 48 turns. Ugh. How much do you actually cost? You cost 70. Never mind. Why am I complaining about advanced frigate construction when it's a lot more expensive than I thought it was? What about robotics? You're 19. What do you do? This technology allows for autonomous AI driven robots to perform simple construction tasks in zero G and resulting in 5% boost to ship construction efficiency. So this reduces cost of building things by 5%. Okay. I believe that that um, leads to drone technology. If I remember right. It's sharp nuclear warhead, more powerful warhead for nuclear missiles, concentrates the radiation in a direct blast, so increases missile damage. Not bad, we can get deflectors. Um, this probably wouldn't be a bad idea. This helps increase our ship's range. Reactor technology allows visible materials to be recycled for power generation. Hmm. Oh boy. What to research next? Military use? At the moment, military is not really a problem. I, I think our problem now is range. Oh, nice, dude. Nice. I'm glad Mission 16 was super chaotic for you, man. Oh, yeah, we have a new planet up here that we explored. Size 7, decent size, 4,000 resources, a little bit on the low side. Um, 232 climate hazard, 34,000. Yeah, that's still a big chunk of our, uh, our economy. Oh, why couldn't you have over 5,000 resources and making this easier on me? But it's a size 7, though. It's a decent size. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Battle computers would be pretty cool. But I don't have a, a real purpose to have large fleets yet. Because we're not at war. It's also why I haven't been researching any uh, energy weapons. 
I think right now we're getting to the point where a lot of the plants we're finding have a, a decent amount of a climate hazard. And if we can research things to get that going or get that under control, um, I think that will help us in the long run. So we might get terraforming bacteria. Yeah. I think terraforming bacteria would be the best play here. Suspended animation actually isn't a bad play either. Because this will help the highly polluted planets. Because we'll have more people landing on the planet helping out with the uh, terraforming effort. Yeah, let's get this first. And then we'll get terraforming bacteria. We begin the quest for knowledge. Take a quick drink. Here we go. Okay. Yeah. We begin the thirst for knowledge. Oh wow, we explored this entire little sector. Nice. No, I, I haven't done anything like that. Basically, as soon as I messaged you up, Pride, I went straight to streaming. <laughs> Um, do, do, do. Okay. Um, we got another one exploring there, another two exploring down here. Cool. So, no next turn, we'll get a couple new planets. But yeah. I think once we get colonies under control, next thing we're going to need is more speed. Let's see, can we research a new hyperdrive yet? Or I think we have to get fusion tech before we can do that. Do yeah, we can't up we can't get an upgrade or a stutter warp until we get fusion tech. So we're gonna have to research uh, recreate uh, visibles and see if that unlocks like a um, overdrive or something. Not overdrive, but a uh, uh, pulse drive. Because we have fusion is a it's gonna take 150 turns. That's that's gonna take way too long. We have to wait for more of our plants to get developed before we really start doing that research. Uh oh. Uh, be friendly to me, birdies. System update. Hey, they were friendly to us. We found one of the plants that they've colonized. I must have got really lucky on this planet. And it's fully developed. Holy crap. Unless are you an independent colony? Are you an independent person? You are. Okay. Why are we at war if you two? Oh, you're you're independent nations. Okay. So this one I found is an independent colony as well. Okie dokie. We got more planets. More planets. We found a purple one. Dang it. <laughs> Ooh, over a thousand, uh, um, over a thousand climate hazard. Holy crap. It's a decent one though. Size six with 5,700 resources. It's not bad. Not bad at all. It's just, it's too polluted. Um, there is, there's actually um, something you can do, if I remember. If we have a battle over these, over this um, planet, like if me and, and uh, an AI go to war, I can bring a bio, um, uh, a bio ships in with a, a special plague that allows me to alter the um, the climate hazard of the planet. And I can shoot it at the planet in hopes that the, that it improves the climate hazard to a point where I can colonize it. That is an advanced thing you can actually do in this game, which is really hilarious. Because I think there's like four different plagues in the game. There's the normal plague, there's the climate hazard adjusting plague, um, the one that um, converts the planet over to your faction, and there's a fourth one. I can't remember what it is. I never really played too much around too much with the bio stuff, but 
It always freaks me out when the AI starts using it and I'm like, oh god, bioweapons are coming towards my planet. What do I do? We don't do any vaccines. Do 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 you are a small one. How dare you be small? Be bigger. Uh and you are useless. Size three, low resources, and very high climate hazard. I would probably just mine you. And you're the one I just checked, so what's this one? You are probably the best of the four, but you have low resources and high climate hazard. Uh... Yeah, we're definitely have to focus more on biology stuff. Also, I think this guy ran out of moves. He ran out of fuel. Yep, sucks to be you. We hear and agree. Farewell, faithful vessels. Farewell, faithful vessels. Enjoy your day in the we Black Ocean. Yeah. <laughs> so many suns. I like the little like animation stuff that goes on in this mod. Like when you zoom in, it actually makes it look like a solar system. So you have like a couple planets like around it. You have like a gas giant going around it. But there's a lot of really cool things that they add in this uh this combined mod that's really really cool. It has some really small touches to it. Okay. Um, I think the next thing... Oh yeah, I need to keep moving these guys. That one is already moving. Um, that one is moving, that one is moving, the other one is being scuttled because it ran out of moves. Uh, or ran out of fuel, I should say. How much longer? We got four more turns until we get our, our colony ship upgrade. And where are we on this? We, we're actually doing pretty good on, um on uh, planetary development, so we can definitely keep building... Oh, we actually have a McCool. Never mind. I'm um, building colony ships to expand more and more of our uh, of our empire. System update. There we go. There we go. Boop. Mm-hmm. Mm. Boop. Yeah, we can put a couple of these in here. Can you make it to your destination now? No. I really need to get the uh, uh the recyclables so their fuel lasts longer. They do not work. They do not last that long, near as long as they need to. Now I need to figure out what's the next planet I want. Um, you're okay. You're okay as well. You're way too small. Um, you have asteroids on you though. So you be you be uh useful in the future. So let's get that going. Move you over here. Yes, Senator. We move as you command. Too small. You're pretty decent. Okay. We move Wait, am I already sending one? I'm already sending one. Never mind. Abort. Abort. <laughs> we rise with the tide, and the tide rises with you. Oh yeah, we explored a new one down here. Uh, this one's great. This one's really good. Size 6, a little bit above average size. 6,800 resources, way above average on resources. 43 climate hazard. That's really, really low and only costs 6,000 to colonize. Yes, please. Into the black. So you, that's where your destination is going. And I think I, I think that one was actually supposed to go to the other one I wanted to colonize, which I think is this one. You command, nope, not you. You, no. I really got to start getting these plants defended. Otherwise, it's going to get really fun really soon. We hear your song. We song you're here. We hear your song. We do all of the singing. And all of the dancing. 
and all of the claymation. Alright, can I make it with four tankers? No. Okay. So these planets are far away. Um, they're just gonna have to deal with the fact that I don't have any protection because I need to get I need to improve my fuel efficiency so it's easier to go that far away than through the galaxy. And all of the songing. And all of the singing. And all of the songing. <laughs> we have received coordinates. I really like the the super cold planets. Like when it's just a giant purple crystal. Really cool design. Boop. System update. Alrighty. I don't think anything important happened on this turn. Great Kool-Aid planet. <laughs> I don't think Kool-Aid would be that gold. I, for some reason when I see it, I, I think of the um, those giant crystals you can harvest in Homo Cataclysm. I just think of it like really shiny and sparkly and rich in resources. That's how my simple mind break, um, looks at things. System hey! Updates. Colonization research complete. The path twisted and turned, but finally we have arrived. We have arrived at the twisting and turning of the paths. And that didn't unlock anything. I believe there's a cruiser version of this one that we can get once we unlock cruiser technology. But that is going to be a while from now. That's a lot of research we have to do. But this, which is only going to take three turns, we desperately need. We have been given all we need, Elder. And after that... Uh, terraforming bacteria, I think is what I'm going to do next. Only going to take nine turns. Oh, I think this, this keeps going up a lot because, uh... My main planet has a lot of industry, and I keep using it to pump out planets, or pump out, uh, ships. But three turns will be a no problemo. Alright, you guys made it. Colonize. Slashing down now. What's our first ones doing? Oh, you're doing great. You're halfway fully developed. You're making like 9,000 industry and 75,000 income. Heck yeah, pump all the planets. It makes total sense in my head. Man, you're growing like crazy. Yeah! What other amount we're making? Almost 400k? Not bad. We need to get that closer to a million and I'll feel a little bit happier. We're making almost 300,000 on the main planet. And it's not producing anything. <laughs> From all the industry upgrades we get in the beginning of the game. Okay, so we have all of our explorers going. We actually have more room for more explorers. Um, but I'm going to wait until we get this done before I make them. System update. <gasps> Uh Why are you? Please don't. Please don't be like that. Also... What? Um... What? I'm confused. I explored a planet and I got control of it somehow. Hmm. Is there any news of, of why this happened? Also, I forget it tells you all the, the fleets and stuff down here, too. I never pay attention to the news in real life or in video games. Why? I wonder if this was a neutral colony that just came under my control because it was supposed to be Lear. Hmm. Well, I got a free planet. <laughs> a free, fully colonized planet. I don't quite understand it. 
Hmm. Well, let's explore. We hear your song. Oh, and uh, Pride, you'll really like this. So one of the things you can do in this game, if you know for a fact that um, you're going to lose a planet because, you know, there's a fleet coming in and you can't take care of it, you can actually go into your planet screen and tell it to start terraforming the planet in, like, the opposite direction of the, the, the person you're fighting. That way they'll have a harder time developing it and you'll have more time to fight back before their planet gets fully developed. That's one of the tactics you can use in this game, and it's hilarious, and I love it. <laughs> you can also slowly kill the enemy population by using um, bio missiles that tear up the the environment, which will which will slowly start causing chaos on the planet, killing the people on it. There's so many interesting things you can do in this game, and I love it so much. Um, also, we found a ice planet. This is cool. Looks like a oh, there's like a gas giant. Nice. Size 4, 4,800 resources, 693 climate hazard. It's actually really, really hot compared to what our people like it. A couple more turns until we get these ones colonized. Ooh, we, can, we explored another one down here. What's this one? A really, really teeny tiny size 1 planet. <laughs> A mining pebble. And I don't have any more um I don't have any more fuel to move. Um actually I could take the tinker out. But the explorer still has a lot of movement. We have received coordinates. And we'll just blow you up. We hear and agree. Farewell, faithful vessel. Oh, and for those of you that are um, unaware, an interesting tactic you can do on your main planet is you can build ships and then blow them up because the debris um, that they that the ships produce when they blow up will actually increase your resources, which will increase your industry. It is a very, very expensive way to build up your industry, but you can totally do that to get your industry, your resources up to a high level because resources are permanent as long as you don't overharvest or overpopulate. Like this one over here, where they're losing resources because for some reason they had tons of civilians. Still don't understand how I got those. In the long term? Yeah. Um, destroyers, which are the, the ships I can currently build, will give you one resource per um, uh, per ship you blow up. Cruisers, I think, are five, and dreadnoughts are like ten. I would not recommend building a dreadnought because they're extremely expensive just to blow it up to make resources for your planet. <laughs> That's like something that the uh, Empire from Star Wars would do. We need more resources. Quickly, build a couple of Imperial Star Destroyers and blow them up. There we go. Now we got resources. I can actually see the Emperor like making some sort of uh, um, some sort of plan to do something like that. Oh yeah. Yeah, just... Destroyers are like super cheap compared to like larger ships. Uh, do do do. Okay, we found something here. It's not a colony trap because um, this isn't a colony ship. This is an explorer fleet. Let's see what it is. Oh, it's a swarm. Okay, we're dead. We're, we're gonna die from bees. Not the bees. Quickly, use the flicker drives. Yes. Get the heck out of there. Ouch! It burns us! It burns us! It burns us! Ow! Now we blew some of them up using our tanker. <laughs> These ships look really cool in this mod. They actually look like creepy, creepy swarmer dudes. It was a leer. That's how that's how dolphins scream. They go yeah. Okay. Well, that fleet's been wiped out. We now know the swarmers are in that sector. System update. <sighs> Good to know. Uh, what do we have here? Pretty much a moderate planet. 
size 5, 4,500 resources, but high climate hazard. It costs, if we colonize this, it will cost us 63,000 resources per day until we get the climate control over, under climate hazard under control. Which the higher it is, the longer it takes. Not only because, you know, more climate hazard, but because population grows slower when the, when the climate hazard is at a lot high level. So technically, it's four times slower. <laughs> um, so we go there. I'm glad you like my song. Ooh, what do we have over here? Uh, oh yeah, that's that's the teeny planet. Or that's a different teeny planet. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. We got one more turn until we get that one done. How are we doing? We're spending 75,000 RUs on construction, but we're at, we're making 433,000 now. Is that with the main planet building things? Uh, the main planet is not building things, so that's probably 333,000. We're looking pretty good. Definitely need to, um, yeah, start colonizing this entire area. Start going crazy with colony ships. There's a lot of our planets that we colonized in the beginning are looking pretty good. Also, the um, the some reason we got this planet, <laughs> still don't know why. But um, yeah, that one will grow over time. Oh, by the way, Pride, let me show you something you can do in this game. Um, I'm just going to queue a bunch of ships to put ourselves in debt. Uh, what's my most expensive ship? Probably Colony Ship. Yeah. So in this game, um, you can go as far as debt as you can possibly want to go. So let's go like $400,000 in debt. Yes. Because you have to pay 10% interest on your debt. And it is totally possible to soft lock yourself by going too far in debt and then the interest just keep accumulating more and more and more and you just keep going deeper and deeper in debt. So that's one of the cool things. Now in this game, um, if you go, if your uh, empire goes in debt, then you start losing morale on your planets and eventually they'll start revolting. So there is definitely a lose scenario that you can go if you go too much in debt. <laughs> My spaceship full of bees. Yeah, totally. Um, just build, just build a uh, drone ships. Problem solved. Now, in in Sword of the Stars too, that's actually a um, a problem with the AI. They don't know how to control their finances. So about thirty percent of the time you play the game, you end up winning. Like, um, or you end up not having to fight the AI because like twenty turns in, they'll go be so massively in debt they can't do anything. When Sword of the Stars won, they're pretty good at managing their finances. Stuff like that doesn't normally happen. Um, but you're exploring up there. Um, you guys are exploring down there. Might need to get more. Oh yeah, I'm waiting for this research to get done. That's right. You. Um, move there. We move between seconds. Every single person moving around. It looks like they are. You have made it to your destination, which you need to colonize that planet. A new sea to explore, Elder. Okay. What would that put us up to? Nine? Oh, we're looking pretty good. On Empire size. System updates. Hey. Alright. Focus on terraforming. And that puts us about a quarter. I usually like to keep this below half, between a quarter and a half when developing. So we're, we're looking good on the amount of finances that we're spending on this stuff. Also, we're going over budget. No! Oh, never mind. We're 99% complete. <laughs> we're not quite over budget. Uh-oh. We found the humans! Peace, please. System updates. 
Sweet. Rimworld. Rimward Mercs. Alright, good to know. So the humans are down in this this sector. Um, let's see, this one honestly isn't too bad. It's, it's pretty much an average planet. Size 4, little small, 7,000 resources, really good, and 212 pound climate hazard. Pretty much an average planet. We hear your song. But it's like way out of our jurisdiction. Let's go ahead and end our turn again. Sweet. Vessels coming near, Elder. We can net are not many. Oh. Though the path twisted and turned, but finally we have arrived. I think we have some swarmers visiting us. Might be time to start investing in some military weapons. Um, but yeah, we now know how to recycle our um, vision drives, so now we can get a little bit more range. And it doesn't look like we get pulse vision. It might be because of our technology. Uh, we use flicker drives, which literally teleport our ships in and out of reality, which is why we can go from zero to full speed instantly. There's no buildup when it comes to our speed. Um, so I don't think there's a possible way to flicker that, or not flicker, but um, um, pulse that with normal engines. So we want to get faster engines. We have to go to fusion, but that's still 49 turns. We don't. We're not quite producing enough research. Um, also, I, did I. Never mind. We're not doing research. So. It's, ooh. I forgot we can we can research monitor controls when we find a monitor. I thought we had to engage it to get that. Okay. Yes, please. I would love to take that monitor because I want that planet that's protecting. It's pretty good. I wonder if that, that might be part of the mod. I don't remember if that's in the base game. Because I think in the base game, you have to engage the monitor and you have to survive the battle and then you get the research to take it over. For this one, you just have to find the monitor and then you can take it over. Interesting. That will be interesting. Okay. Um, we could get terraforming bacteria, which will help us um, with our colonization. Um, but let's see what's... Let's see what's... Uh, ooh. Ha! Ah, my planet. No! This is an explorer! No! It's not a colonizer. <laughs> oh my, but that is a good planet. That is a very good planet. Hmm... Size 6, decent size, 7,400 resources, very good, and only 68 climate hazard. Um, what's their climate compared to ours? Um, that's not what I want. Um, I think... I think it's in... Where's my main planet? No, yeah, you're not my main planet. Uh, humans like it warmer than we do. So it's more ideal for me than it is for them. Okay. Good enough. But it's on the left side. Alright, we need to go to design and we need to add rec um, recombinant visibles to this, which will increase our range from 6 to 9, which means it improves our fuel um, efficiency by 50%. Nice. It's a big upgrade. <laughs> um, so save design. Yes, Ship design ready for construction. And then colonizer, we need to suspend an animation, which would allow them to have more um, um, colonists on the, uh, on the uh, ship. And then that for fuel efficiency. We shall remember this design for the future. Remember that design for the future. <laughs> yes, it's the best kind of future. Design ready for and satellite. And then these guys, even though they're probably not going to move much, we'll upgrade it anyway so everything is synced. We shall remember this design for the future. Okay. And now we need to build a tanker colony ship and then build me more tankers so I can move these around. We begin construction now. I want this. 
Oh yeah, I wonder the humans might have a hard time moving around because uh, um, this this system has a bunch of little clusters, so they could probably move quickly between the clusters, but take a long time to go through here. That might be too far away for them. Until they get better research, of course. Uh, this one's good too. Um, I need a colony ship. Need it now. Lord colonies. We shall we steal and fire, Elder. Okay. Hmm. What research do we want to do now? Um. Again, we could do terraforming bacteria because we are still spreading like wildfire when it comes to new, new planets and new systems. So improving our, our efficiency with terraforming bacteria would be really good. Yeah, yeah. Let, let's keep pushing that. This venture could take us far, Elder. I think that would be a good idea. How many exploration fleets do we have going on right now? Um. Um. You're not an exploration fleet. You're a colonizer. Oops. Build defenses. I would love to build defenses. Um, a lot of these planets aren't developed and I don't have the range to uh, reach them. I might have the range now, but I actually, I need to rebuild these guys. Um, uh, because you can't just retrofit your ships. You actually have to get rid of them and rebuild a new fleet. So, we're just going to have to be a little risky for now. And go aggressively expanding. Which could totally backfire. Because, uh... Um, for this game, uh, Pride, industrial output is everything. That's used for terraforming, that's used for building up your infrastructure, and it's used for building up defenses. So the only ones that are really good um, are the main ones that I've kind of started out with. They have like over 10,000. And then 10,000 um, can build like a, a frigate in a very fast way. Um, and they can also build the satellites pretty quick too. But I'm trying not to go too crazy on my money, um, because that's another thing you have to keep a, uh, an eye on. You want to make sure that your money doesn't go too far down, because if you go in debt or if you get really low on money, then your um, your your morale starts dropping because people start getting anxious, and other thing, other problems start happening. <laughs> we have to worry about riots and uh, and stuff like that. All right, so how are you doing down here? Um, you're the one I just explored. Oh yeah, that you're the one that I want to like colonize, I believe. We have a lot of planets over here that are just like they're polluted, but they're not too bad. All right, let's go ahead and um, I want to get rid of you. Yeah, they went, they went to, uh, 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 forgot you can look at things by just clicking on them. That's funny. Uh, scuttle. Get away. We hear and agree. Farewell, faithful vessels. And we'll build the new improved versions of these. And a couple tankers. We should have a decent amount of range with that, uh, um, that fuel efficiency thing on. We We'll start sending them the new planets that we're colonizing. And then maybe, since these ones are like pretty much fully developed, um, we can get this one to start building us some tankers and um, some, um, some more of these so we can get more we planets under our belt. Fire, How many do we have? We have nine right now. We're doing pretty good. What turn are we on? 52? Yeah, we're doing pretty good. <laughs> Around 100 um, things start um, going getting hectic where um, computers will start fighting each other. You, I want to move you um, here. Into the black. Oh boy. 
I want this planet, though. I really want this planet. <clears throat> Would be a great addition to the Empire. Ooh. Found the bird people. Let's see if they attack or not. And then we have the humans down here, which I believe is just an escort. Um, a uh, exploration plate. System updates. Which they were. Okay. Ooh, the birdies actually attacked us. Okay. Okay. I have to keep an eye on that. Nope, that's not what I want. I kind of were actually at war of everything. <laughs> okay, okay. Is there a way we can, like, negotiate some peace? Oh, uh, we don't know their language. I forgot. You actually can't negotiate peace, peace until you start learning their language. <laughs> I forgot that's a thing in this game. <laughs> So we have to we have to treat them like uh primitive creatures until we know, understand them Ooh, this is a cool design oh that's cool that's another ice planet that is so cool with the it looks like it has like icy clouds flying around on a green planet with like a giant crack going through the middle or that or that that might be the clouds maybe that yeah that's a crack going through the clouds Cool. Uh, size 8. Pretty large size planet. 861 climate hazard, so we can't colonize it. It's way too cold. And 3,700 resources. Not bad. And I can't move anymore. Wait, wait. Yes, we can. <laughs> we hear your song. Bye-bye, little critter. We hear and agree. What do we have down here? <gasps> I want this planet. This is mine. This is my planet. Size 9. Pretty much the largest size in the game. 104 climate hazards, so very low pollution. And 4,700 resources. About an average amount. I don't care if that's like super far away from my empire. I want it. I want it. And this one? This one's good, but it has a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, climate hazard. 400, 441 climate hazard. Um... Well, this is the one that uh, that guy wanted, and apparently we won that battle. <laughs> we had him set the peaceful. <laughs> I guess we uh, I guess we negotiated peace by with bullets or something. Who knows? But yeah, we're we're getting close to the point that once we get done with this research, we probably need to start focusing on um, getting actual weapons going. Because we know Gauss cannons, which is a very primitive uh, kinetic cannon weapon, and red lasers, which is like the most primitive uh, weapon in the game. So, yeah, we're getting to the point where it's probably time to start developing some sort of military ship. Because uh, the only thing that's really protecting us is our planetary defense systems. Uh, boop, boop, boop. All right, did I tell all of you guys to move? No, I didn't. I am bad at my job. You move. Oh, well, you can't move. Because you have the same problem as the guy above you. No, you can't. We hear your voice coming to Newberry. Okay. Looking good. We get the fleet built? Oh, yes, we did. Also, all of you guys. Kabooey. We hear and agree. Farewell, faithful vessels. Oh, are you still building the patrols? You are. Okay. So you, you, boop. Um, wait, I, it's not, that's not what I wanted. Heal and agree. We move 
Between seconds. Yeah, I never explored that one. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, yeah, we have nine colonies, 331,000 RUs. I don't know why I said RUs. 331,000 um, dollars. And you... I guess we can move you out. You're still alive. You still have your engines working. But they want that planet. Decisions need to be made. Did I... Did I do the thing again? I did. No, don't move that. You're not an explorer ship. You know, for some reason I keep thinking you are. Um, I want this planet, right? Nope, that's a nice planet. Uh, you it's this one down here isn't it yes that's the that's the golden child that i want you get down here into the black. yes that is the golden child that i want okay do we have another one that i can find Mm -hmm. That one's pretty good. Oh god. Um, I think you were the one? You nope, you were not. Dang it! You are the one. Alright, let's go ahead and end our turn. Uh... Uh, what do you want with me? Oh, he wants this planet. Hmm. Peaceful? System update. Hey! <laughs> we didn't engage. I love how in this mod that the AI will always prioritize being peaceful if they don't know you. It won't just come out and just instantly kill you. Oh yeah, the swarmers are on this system. Hmm. That means we're gonna have to deal with the swarmers if I colonize. No, no, we won't. We won't. Uh, we don't have asteroids. The so swarmers only uh, prioritize planets with asteroids so they can uh, um, expand their population. So we're fine here. The one below it, however, is a problem. A new sea to explore, Elder. We got that one. I'm keeping you there. Keeping you there, plastic boy. And. I believe once we colonize that, that'll be 10. We have 10 planets under our control. This system has 200 planets, so we're 5% done um, taking over this entire galaxy. <laughs> A new sea to explore, Vakona. Dear Rico, we have made an early breakthrough, Vakona. Commander. Commander is what they say for the humans. Vakuna, I believe, is... Vakuna is Tarka's, Elder is Lear, and Queen is um, the bug guys. Yes, my queen. We begin research. No. I want it. It's mine. You can't have it. Whoa. Whoa, we found a green giant. Interesting. Very cold giant. Uh, it's a good planet, but its climate hazard is a little bit too high. Might be possible to get this if we get more biological research going. Also, I sent a colony ship down here. What the freak is wrong with me? We hear and agree. Well, <sighs> I keep building colony ships to explore when I'm not supposed to be doing that. <laughs> I mean, it, it doesn't really matter, but I'm supposed to be using exploring ships. Um, yep, you're still alive. 
Did I lose those? I think I lost that, uh, those units. We might be going to War of Humans, because I really want that planet. Once, whenever we get done with the, um, uh, this research, we're going to start re researching military technology to go to War of the Humans. I think that'll be it. But anyways, guys, um, it's like one o'clock in the morning for me and I'm starting to get tired. So I think I'm going to go to bed. I don't want to get too tired playing this game because uh, it's, it is a thinking game, especially in the galaxy mode. And um, I don't want to make any major mistakes, especially since so far this playthrough is going pretty well. <laughs> we got pretty lucky with a couple um, good planets that were really, really, really um, um, easy for us to get and right next to our main our main system so that's getting us a huge boost right now so yeah um, we need to continue exploring continue um colonizing planets that are like okay or good um good territory and probably start researching military technology because uh, if, if we if any of these guys go to war with us um, we're gonna die we don't really have any uh, any ways to protect ourselves because we've been focusing on industry and uh and biology so yeah but I hope you guys enjoy this stream. Um, this is this has been a lot of fun. Um, I definitely want to do this again, and hopefully, hopefully, I can actually finish a Sword of the Stars game. These games are long, and I've never actually gotten through without being completely stumped by the AI at certain points. <laughs> but hopefully, with the balances the combined mod did to both the AI and the actual ships, we hopefully won't have too many of those issues. Yeah, I'll do that. Pride. I'll, I'll probably do that tomorrow sometime. Um, hopefully, you know, hopefully that works fine. Um, but yeah, I uh, hope you guys enjoy this. Um, please leave a like if you did. If you like what I do, consider, consider subscribing. And I'll check you guys out in the next stream. Until next time. This is Captain Soban signing out.